welcome to the Chasing Spirituality podcast. I'm your host, Megan, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today. Each episode is full of heartfelt and expansive content that will really help you expand your consciousness and grow as a person. I created this podcast because I wanted to share my own personal experiences on my spiritual journey, but I also wanted to meet others and have them share what they've been through, and how they've gotten to where they are today. If you haven't done so already, it would really mean a lot to me if you could rate and review the podcast. This really helps the podcast grow and reach more people, but it also allows me to get more guests on the show. Now on to today's topic. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Chasing Spirituality. I'm super excited that you're here. I am your host, Megan, and if you're new here, welcome to the Chasing Spirituality podcast. For all of my returning listeners, welcome back. I'm excited that you're spending another day, another moment with me and tuning in to these messages that I have. Today, we're going to be talking about manifestation, and I'm going to be sharing one of my tips that is not... Uh, typically talked about when we talk about manifestation, but I have found that it is one of the number one tips that have really um, helped me as well as clients improve our ability to manifest what it is that we want to help us create the reality that we're trying to um, tune into for ourselves. So before we jump into that, I wanted to talk about some things that are happening this month. The Chasing Spirituality is a monthly subscription platform that I have. And if you're not already a member, you can find out more about that at my website, ChasingSpirituality.com. There is a tab called Community, and it tells you everything that you can expect to find in this community. We do three live calls a month. And... We also have fun tips and tricks and things like that that we share in there. The community is a wonderful place to meet new people, to meet, lo- to meet, to meet like-minded people, and to just connect to other spiritual people that are on a path of intuit- intuitive development, as well as wanting to grow on your spiritual and personal path. This month in the community, I'm actually doing a, another live call, and it's going to be a manifestation workshop, and we're calling this workshop um, Manifest Your Year, because we're going to be mapping out the goals and intentions that we have for the entire next 12 months. So October is actually a really great time to reflect on the past year and start to get um, going start to build some groundwork, some foundation for the year to come. Traditionally, in the United States, New Year's is January 1st. However, October, if you look at the seasons and you look at the pagan will of the year, October is actually the end of the cycle, and November 1st would be the beginning of the next chapter because things in October are coming to an end. Things are dying. We're starting to get to those longer nights. So on October 18th in the Chasing Spirituality community, that's when we're going to be doing this manifestation workshop. So I thought it would be a really great opportunity to talk about manifestation on the podcast and talk about some things that I plan to discuss in this live workshop in case you can't make it or you're not a member in the community. If you're a member but you can't make it to this particular live, I will be posting the recording in the community for anyone who is not able to attend the live. If you can attend the live, Um, I look forward to seeing you and I plan to save time at the end for questions, um, comments, feedback, anything like that that you guys have. So for this episode, I really want to focus on one of my favorite tips, something that I always guide my students and my clients on when they're really trying to create that new reality. They're trying to create something better for themselves. And what that is, is doing the inner work. I talk about this a lot on the podcast, how inner work is 
super important, not only for our own happiness and becoming the best version of who we're meant to be, of who we want to become, but it's also linked to our intuitive development. I talked about this in the last episode that was on the podcast, how if you're really trying to grow your intuitive abilities, you're trying to connect to your higher self, connect to your spirit guides, inner work is connected to that. The same way that inner work is connected to manifestation. The reason why these things are connected is because if you're trying to manifest abundance, you're trying to manifest more wealth or um, prosperity, but you don't feel prosperous, you don't feel abundant, whatever limiting beliefs, whatever um, ideas and things like that that you have that are preventing you or holding you back from believing that you can be abundant, that you can have this wealth, this prosperity, then it's going to be really hard for you to manifest those things. I find that people come to me and they're like, I can manifest all these little things, but it's really hard for me to manifest my big goals, my big dreams. Or I've been working on manifesting something and it's just not coming to me. I just, I'm not quite there. I can't ever get these bigger things that I'm really wanting to create for myself. Or they have certain blockages around certain areas. Maybe they can manifest certain things or they can manifest certain parts of their life, certain parts of their reality. But they struggle in other areas. They struggle with other parts. And I find that this is because of two reasons. The first reason is because you have lessons that you're still learning around this area. There's things that you may or may not be aware of, certain blockages, certain challenges that you're currently working through. If you have certain fears or blockages that you haven't addressed or that you're still currently addressing, then you may not be ready to manifest the things that you're trying to manifest. The second part of this that may come up if you're struggling to manifest certain things are these limiting beliefs. And that's where inner work comes in. If you do not believe that you deserve wealth, prosperity, and abundance, then it's going to be really hard for you to manifest prosperity, wealth, and abundance. So inner work is interconnected to manifestation. A lot of people don't like to hear that. They're like, what? What do you mean I have to do all this shadow work and all this inner work and all this healing so that I can, I can have these things, but I really want you to hear me out and I really want you to think about it for a second. If you're trying to reach these, these, these new levels, if you're trying to be the better version of yourself, you're trying to reach your highest potential, then you have to feel like you are the better version of yourself. And if you still have limiting beliefs that you're working through, you still have fears that are holding you back, you still have subconscious blockages that are really standing in the way of you being and embodying that better person, then of course you're not going to quite get there yet. It's sometimes it comes in levels, sometimes it comes in baby steps. And if you look at your life a year ago, you look at your life five years ago, I'm sure that you can see how as you did inner work, as you improved who you are, as you improved how you feel about yourself, as you have improved your everyday life and your everyday feelings, your everyday demeanor, your everyday habits, you have also manifested and improved your life. You've manifested better things for yourself and it's because you have changed. You have adopted new beliefs. You have changed the way that you operate. You have changed the way that you feel about yourself. You have changed the way that you view things. You have changed your mindset. You have changed the way that you think, the way that you feel, the way that you respond. So all of this is connected to manifestation. If you are in a state of lack, and you feel like you are lacking things, you are lacking wealth, if you feel poor, if you feel like you are in a poor mindset, then how do you expect to manifest abundance and prosperity? So yes, it's important to realize that your mindset and your state of mind 
influence your outer experience. It influences everything around you because your feelings is what attracts things to you. You have to feel abundant to attract more abundance. Abundance is a state of mind. Abundance is not something that you have to search for. It's not something that you have to try to do. It's already there. It already exists. But for some reason, you are not at the same vibration as abundance. You are not at the same energetic frequency that you um, as abundance or whatever it is that you're trying to create for yourself. It doesn't even have to be abundance. I'm just using that as a reference because that's one that a lot of people try to manifest. But we can use this same concept and look at anything that we're trying to create for ourselves. If you're struggling with your health, do you feel healthy? Do you do things that make you feel healthy? Do you take care of yourself? Mind, body, spirit. Are you nourishing yourself? Mind, body, spirit. Or do you still believe that you can't be healthy? Do you believe that you have bad health? Do you believe that you are sick? Do you believe that your body is sick? That your mind is sick? That you're spiritually unwell? If you have these beliefs about yourself, about your situation, about who you are, then it's going to be very difficult for you to manifest something different. It's going to be difficult for you to create a healthy life. One of the easiest things that I feel help us reach the vibrational state, or at least the awareness of what vibrational state we need to be in, is evaluating the current state that we're in and asking ourselves what is the mindset or the current or the state that we're trying to reach. To do this, I feel like it's really important to narrow it down to one specific question. Who do you want to be? If you could envision the best version of you, what does that person look like? What does that person do? How does that person feel? How do they act? How do they respond? What does their outer world look like? What does their outer environment feel like? What kind of interactions do they have? What kind of things mm -hmm. does that person feel? What kind of things does that person experience? If you were the best version of you, if you had reached your highest and best potential, what would you be doing? What would you look like? How would you walk? How would you talk? How would you respond? What would your interactions be like? How would you hold yourself? Really tune in to that person, that person you're wanting to be. Because our reality is a reflection of who we are. And I've talked about this in many, many episodes about how everything is energy. Everything is vibration. So ask yourself if you were the vibration of the best version of you. What would that really be like? Would you feel happy? Would you feel loved? Would you feel healthy? What does healthy feel like to you? Would you be wealthy and abundant? Well, what does that feel like to you? What does it feel like to be abundant? For me, abundance feels like freedom. But for you, it may feel like something else. There's all of these key words. There's all of these thoughts but it's all linked to an energy. It's all linked to an emotion. It's, and it's layered. So try tuning in to more than just, I want money. I want to be healthy. Really think about what that looks like for you. What that feels like for you. What that is for you. 
And if the end goal is just to be the best version of who you are, then there's not usually as many specifics as we think. It's not as specific as we try when we manifest. It's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. There's something deeper, something bigger that we want to feel. We don't want to have to worry. We don't want to feel anxious anymore. We want to be confident. We want to be able to speak our truth in any situation to any person. We want to be able to set boundaries. We want to be able to sleep in till 11 o'clock every day. We want to be able to stay up late every night. If you could have the reality that you want and you could paint it and you could write it and it could look exactly how you want it to look. Who would you need to be to have that? And then ask yourself, what is standing in your way of being that person? What blockages do you have? What limiting beliefs are you holding on to? What fears are standing in your way? Because we are what blocks our manifestations. Not the universe. Not your gods. Not anyone else. If there are things that are blocking you, then it's something within you. It's something that you're still learning. It's a lesson that you're working through. It's a fear that you haven't quite overcome yet. And it may even be that you're not really clear on what it is that you want. And that's another tip of mine. That's another tip that we're going to talk about in the workshop is you have to get really clear on how it is that you want to feel, on who it is that you want to be. That's super important. And most of the time, we don't know who that is. We don't know what that is. We don't know who it is that we want to be, who we aspire to be. We may have some ideas, but in order to manifest, in order to create that reality, we need to be super clear on what it is that we really want. And then we need to get clear on what it is that's standing in our way. And it's always something internal. It's always something within ourselves that is holding us back. So in the live workshop that we're going to be doing in the Chasing Spirituality community, I'm going to be diving a bit deeper into this as well as some of my other tips and tricks. I'm going to walk you guys through a guided meditation to help you get really clear on who that person is. And then we're going to work on mapping out the next year on what our big goals are. What is our intention for the next year? Who is it that we want to be? What does that best version of you really look like? How do you want to feel? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to attract and bring into your life? So if you're not already a community member, go and check out my website. The community tab will tell you more about the community and all of the other beautiful and wonderful things that we do over there. And if you're already a member, make sure that you RSVP to the event that was posted on the 1st. This one is going to be really fun and I'm really excited to be able to share this with you guys. This is something that I did in my in-person community last year and I'm going to tweak it a little bit. If you are um, local to me and you like to come to the in-person classes, this is something that I'm going to be doing in person as well. I don't have a specific date set up for that yet, but I'll be doing it in person as well if you would rather attend that one. But I look forward to seeing you guys. I hope that this helps inspire you to figure out what it is that you want for yourself. What does the best version of you really look like and feel like so that you can get clear on what reality we're creating for ourselves. I hope you all have a wonderful day. This is for anyone who resonates with this podcast and is interested in more spiritual content. Have you checked out the Chasing Spirituality community? Well, you can find out more on my website, chasingspirituality.com. But this community 
is a wonderful place for you to meet like-minded people, but also be supported in your own authentic expression as you go on your spiritual journey and you learn more about fascinating topics as well as exercise your own spiritual and intuitive gifts. We have lives every single month. There's meditation videos and courses and tons of extra bonus content and videos. So if you're interested in more content, please go check that out. We would love to have you.